gateway to the canal, where a watershed election is setting the region on a new course. Centuries have passed since the first historical accounts of Muslim encounters with the Western world in the last decades of the 16th century to the 1996 formation of the SPCPD under Nur Miswari. Will the barriers of the centuries-old quest for national identity finally be lifted? Will it be a course towards lasting peace? Good evening, I'm Angelo Castro Jr. broadcasting from Sambuanga with Cesc Dillon in Manila. The answers in the world tonight. begin tonight by looking at the preparations for Monday's armed election. Authorities say so far there is none of the violence and tension that have characterized past elections. Patrick Pies reports on the situation in Sulu. Authorities are monitoring the towns of Look, Talipao, Panamao, and Kalingalang Kaluan, the usual trouble spots, but this election seems especially trouble-free. The military says maybe the election is not as hotly contested. Uh, maybe this is uh, uh, maybe uh, because uh, this is not a local uh, election. This is a uh, uh, arm uh, election wherein uh, they will only vote uh, the uh, district uh, assemblymen. Another reason is Miswari is running unopposed. Local politicians also don't view the election for regional assembly as important as local elections. Most candidates were out of town for most part of the campaign although local officials have long been notorious for being absent from their towns anyway. At least voter interest appears to be high. For the first time, the counting will be done by computer. It should help make the elections credible. The only problem left is how to stop ballot snatching. We hope that with the accompaniment of the transfer from the precincts to the municipalities and from the municipalities mismo to the um, provincial tabulation centers, we can guard the integrity of the ballots because we'll be um, with the ballots all the way. For 24 years, Ms. Swati led the life of a rebel, and there's no better indication of his return to the mainstream than his election to the ARMM government. Patrick Pius, ABS-CBN News, Sambuanga City. Now, where did this conflict begin? Is the exercise on Monday, the 9th of September, the answer? We investigate the roots of the conflict. And as Patrick Pires reports, one of them is the struggle between Muslims and Christians for land in the land of promise. For centuries, Fort Pilar in Sambuanga City was the farthest Christianity could set foot in Muslim Mindanao. It was only under the Americans that Christian settlers began occupying more and more of the land. By 1918, 22% of Mindanao's population was Christian, 49% were Muslim, the rest were tribal minorities. By 1970, 75% was Christian, the Muslim population was reduced to 19%. By that time, Mindanao was ripe for war. Today, only 5 of the 25 provinces in Mindanao and Sulu are Muslim-dominated. Several factors contributed to the growth of the Christian population. One was migration. The implementation of a Land Holdings Act during the American occupation in a land where traditional Muslim society has no system of land titles resulted in the land falling under the ownership of Christian migrants. This bred mistrust and deep hatred between Muslims and Christians. Despite the changing demographics of the South, the Muslim community feels they have a historic right to Mindanao. Patrick Pius, ABS-CBN News. It's the SPCPD and the armed elections, the Ramos administration's response to the Muslim quest for national identity. For this struggle affects not only our Christian brothers, but the nation as well. And because of Mindanao's Christian majority, Malacanang knew the Peace and Development Council was going to be a tough sell. But despite that, President Ramos met protesters head on and made his sales pitch. Up to now, Mindanao's Christian residents are not buying. They accuse Malacanang of selling out. Julkipli Wadi is a Muslim professor at the University of the Philippines. He understands the Christian sentiments. Mistrust and even hatred bred by years of war could not just be remedied by a simple flick of a pen. The problem is kung nagkaroon na ng psychological impact sa'yo yung gera, lalo na nawalan ka ng pamilya, nawalan ka ng mga 
mahal sa buhay, masakit na yun. So that by that time, if, if anybody would like to call for peace, it, it would be difficult for people to, to support that call. In effect, the MNLF will gain control of provinces that are predominantly Christian. But Wadi says that does not mean Christians will live under MNLF occupation. Rather, the council is simply meant to improve the Muslim lot. The presence of the MNLF as a dominant uh, uh, group in the SPCPD is not actually intended to dominate the Christians. Mm -hmm. But it is a mechanism to uplift the Muslims from the bondage of, 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 uh, of uh, poverty para they will be at par with the Christians. Wadi says the Mindanao Peace Council only solves the political aspect of the conflict that ravaged Mindanao for so long, but not the roots of the clash in culture. It will take individual Muslims and Christians to erase centuries of mistrust. In fact, ang, 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 from the Islamic perspective, Jesus and Prophet Muhammad are brothers. And here we are claiming to be Muslims and Christians, yet we are fighting and killing with each other. Uh, it's a, a, a height of irony. No? You have to start from something small. And to me, address, addressing the, the Mindanao conflict by uh, resolving the main political issue, it's a, a good approach. For a while, part of the problem was Nur Miswari. But surveys indicate perception of the MNLF chairman is changing. And Jing Reyes is here to tell us about it. A survey in 1990 showed 44% of respondents did not trust Miswari. The distrust dropped to half in a 1993 survey. And SWS pollster Professor Felipe Miranda expects the next survey to give an even better review of Miswari. With the current uh, developments regarding the SPCPD, uh, the zone of peace and development, I think there is a is good reason to expect that the next uh, survey reading for Nur Miswari will have that discuss even cut down some more. The peace agreement should bolster Miswari's image and reduce whatever ethnic prejudice there is against the Muslims and the MNLF. Miswari may be far from popular among Christian communities in the South, but the peace agreement now gives him national stature, and the arm gives him the opportunity to hone his political skills. <laughs> Professor Miranda, who was a classmate in UP, says Miswari could enhance his leadership by mingling with Christian communities as well. I think familiarity in this case will not breed contempt, but respect and, uh, and develop so much trust for him. Jing Reyes, ABS-CBN News. CBN. Preparations in other armed areas when we come back. Or the arm and troops usually deployed to and in Sulu and Basilan are now on watch in Sambuanga City. Arlene Biasbas tells us why. Behind me are two of the former members of the 9th Regional Special Action Force. In previous ARMM elections, they were deployed in Sulu to respond to possible hostilities in the area. But now the PNP sees no more need for their redeployment. RSOP members are now called Task Force COBRA, a PNP unit in charge of maintaining peace and order in Sambuanga City. This policeman says, this is the first time he won't see action in the ARMM polls. For him, it's a sign of better things to come. But the change in assignment does not necessarily mean they can sit back and relax. On the contrary, the Sambuanga Internal Defense Command says, while the city is not part of the ARMM, it is considered a hot spot. The sudden appearance of hundreds of MNLF soldiers deployed here to welcome Iswari caused a mild panic among Sambuanga residents. The firearms ban is now enforced in Sambuanga City. Authorities say they are now concentrating their efforts in urban areas where anti-SPCPD sentiment is high. Arlene de la Cruz Bias Boss, ABS CBN News. Preparations for Monday's elections in Mindanao are now in full swing. 
Chari Villa just got back from Maguindanao and is now in Cotabato City with her report. Chari? Yeah, good evening, Angelo. Good evening, Philippines. Authorities here in Maguindanao are confident the elections on Monday will go on without any hitch. Here in Cotabato City, where the ARMM government is temporarily situated, the people seemed unmindful of the preparations for Monday's elections, which is understandable since the city is not part of the autonomous government. But ballots from all the towns in Maguindanao will be transported and counted here at the Cotabato City Pilot School. Already, the Comelec and all the political party representatives here have tested the new AIS-150 counting machines. The machines were sealed in boxes and will only be opened on uh, September 9, Election Day. Commissioner Maambong says this is to ensure the sanctity of the computers. On the peace and order situation, a wealthy Chinese businesswoman was kidnapped this afternoon here in Cotabato City. Vicky Go, owner of the Cotabato Marketing Enterprises, was plucked by 10 armed men right in her own house. The Go family refused to be interviewed. But the police and even the Comelec stressed this has nothing to do with the elections. However, the kidnappers have not made any demands yet. Only two days ago, another kidnapped victim, Marivik Ontal Mira, was released after the family paid ransom money amounting to 215,000 pesos. Mira was held for 17 days. That's a look at the situation here. Back to you, Angelo. Thank you very much, Cherry. The anti-SPCPD sentiment is also running high in other areas like Iligan and Anali Lugod reports from Cagayan de Oro. Dagang salamat, Angelo. The police and military in Iligan City are on red alert. Security screws have been tightened since a new peace agreement was signed between the government and the MNLF. Napocor power plants are now being closely guarded. Authorities fear lawless elements might sabotage the power plants. Anti-SBCPD supporters are also preparing for another round of protest actions against the Southern Philippines Council for Peace and Development. A rally is set on armed election day on Monday. The NAMFREL will mobilize some 15,000 women volunteers to alongside their male counterparts. Islamic religious leaders are spearheading the movement. Meanwhile, NAMFREL Chairman for Arm Abdul Ghani Marohom Sar expects widespread fraud to mar the balloting in Lano del Sur. A rift between Marohom Sar and Comelec Commissioner for Lano del Sur, Remedios Fernando, is brewing over electoral procedures. of the soldiers in ng election. That is a simple statement, but they mounted what is in their feeling, or at least they mounted what they heard from their uh, superiors. That's the latest from this part of Mindanao. Angelo? Thank you very much, Anneli. In Malacanang, the president has issued last-minute instructions to ensure peaceful elections. And Cesar in Manila has that story. Thank you, Angelo. President Ramos brushed aside reports terrorist groups are out to disrupt Monday's armed elections. Mr. Ramos has directed government agencies involved in the polls to ensure the exercise goes smoothly. Yesterday, a bomb was found in a Catholic church in Cotabato. Do you emphasize the conduct of honest, orderly, peaceful elections? Hope, H-O-P-E, no? Yan ang pagasa ng bayan. South Cotabato Representative Daisy Avance Fuentes says MNLF Chairman Nur Miswari is showing his true colors. She says Miswari's personal attacks on the opponents of the SPCPD indicate he does not tolerate other views except his own. Ang kinatatakot po namin sa ganitong kung uh, attitude na pinapakita ni Norm Miswari being backed by few thousands of armed regulars, eh baka po gamitin niya yan laban sa mga taong hindi niya gusto. The Health Department announced a cholera outbreak in Paco and San Andres, Manila. Today, the MWSS found leaks and illegal connections in the area. Canal and sewage water were seeping into the water mains. Since Sunday, 135 people have been rushed to hospitals. 41 are still being treated. One girl has already died. Authorities fear the outbreak might spread to other areas. The rainy season already at its peak and the flooding as we expect. 
So this kind of problems might also crop up in the other areas. The government has suspended the deployment of Filipino workers to seven countries in the Persian Gulf War region. Jordan, Kuwait, Iran, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain. About one million Filipinos are working there. Labor officials are worried the confrontation between the United States and Iraq might escalate. If it does, the POEA says contingency measures are in place. A trade arrangement between the Philippines and Iraq has been put on hold. Kathy Yang has that story. This portion. Thanks, Jess. The RP Iraq oil for food arrangement is on hold. Around $210 million worth of Philippine exports cannot enter Iraq. This is due to the United Nations order stopping the arrangement until the Iraq conflict is resolved. Philippine International Trading Corporation President Jose Yulu says the country is competing with other countries to take part in the $2 billion oil swap. The arrangement is a setup where countries supply food and medicine to Iraq in exchange for oil. Filipino Shell bids to be the country's top asphalt exporter with its 500 million peso bitumen manufacturing plant in Pinilla Rizal. Bitumen is a petroleum byproduct that serves as raw material for asphalt. The plant is expected to produce up to 210 metric tons of asphalt annually. About 70% of the plant's output will be exported to Indonesia, China, and other Asian countries. Honda kept its top position in passenger car sales. Partial figures from the car manufacturers of the Philippines show Honda sales surged 75% for the first eight months of the year. Toyota was a close second, while Nissan sales declined. Three Muslim militants accused of terrorism are convicted in New York. Details on that and other stories when the news returns. Militants were convicted to life imprisonment for plotting to bomb a dozen American airlines in 1994. One of them was Ramsi Ahmed Youssef, who is suspected of masterminding the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Youssef was also convicted for placing a bomb on board a Philippine Airlines flight to Tokyo in December 1994. As the confrontation between the United States and Iraq appears to wind down, clashes between rival Kurdish factions are intensifying in northern Iraq. One faction opposed to Saddam Hussein has warned the U.S. it will seek Iran's help if Washington does not help them in the power struggle. At least 11 people have been killed since Hurricane Fran struck North and South Carolina. Fran left a trail of destruction along the Carolina coast. The hurricane, which packed winds of up to 193 kilometers per hour, snapped power lines and tossed trees. Fran has been downgraded into a tropical storm. But forecasters fear heavy rains might cause severe flooding. Now let's move closer to home, Gigi Grande with tomorrow's weather forecast. This portion is brought to you by NDD Buster from Smart Cell Phone. Tropical Storm Maring has been upgraded to a typhoon. She's right here, 740 kilometers east of Aurora Province. Winds are estimated at 120 kilometers per hour. Signal number one is in effect over these provinces. Maring is forecast to move west-northwest, bringing scattered rain throughout Luzon and the Visayas region tomorrow. Mindanao will also have scattered rain, no thanks to an intertropical convergence zone. Looks like a wet ARMM election day ahead. And that's the weather forecast. Sports News is up next with Diane Castilla. Tonight, Alaska Milk again outstudied Formula Shell to take a 3-2 lead in the PBA Commissioner's Cup Finals. The milkman clogged the passing lane down low, forcing a lot of turnovers. The win put the milkman on the threshold of winning its third straight title and the second crown of a possible rare Grand Slam feat this year. Shell's coaching staff says they must regain control of the boards and get others to contribute in the scoring department if the team is to force a rubber match in Game 6 on Sunday. At the U.S. Open, Pete Sampras and Goran Ivanisevic are in the semifinals. Sampras won a dramatic five-set match. Despite an upset stomach and dehydration, he managed to squeeze 25 aces past an inspired Alex Coretia. Coretia played the game of his life, unleashing 90 winners, but double faulted in the final point. Ivanisevic ended Stefan Edberg's Grand Slam career, winning in three sets. And that's the latest in sports. Back to you, Angelo. Thank you very much, Dayan. 
I'd like to inform everyone that on Monday, the 9th of September, a full coverage of the armed elections here in Mindanao will be heard and seen on Channel 37, the Sari Manok News Network. Channel 37 in some areas, Channel 31 in some areas. And for the world tonight, we will be, uh, well, we'll continue our coverage from Sambuanga City. So you'll see and hear us from Sambuanga City on Monday. For our final word tonight, a thought from Dr. Jose Rizal's farewell to 1883. And he said, my lips have forgotten the names of the native races in order not to say anything more than Filipinos. And that's the world tonight, September 6, 1996. From Zamboanga, I'm Angelo Castro Jr. And I'm Seth Dillon. And I'm... Catch the latest developments in global news and events in the world tonight. Zamboanga City. Four provinces, Sulu, Tawi-Tawi, Maguindanao, and Lanao del Sur, voted in today's armed election. An election that could determine the future of the rest of Mindanao. The other significance is that this is the country's first computerized elections. But as we shall see later in Lanao del Sur, old methods like ballot snatching can still derail the electoral process. Will the vote for Miswari translate to a vote for peace? Or will it bring in a new period of uncertainty? Good evening, I'm Angelo Castro Jr. broadcasting from Zamboanga. This port rebels voting perhaps for the first time voted their chairman Nu Miswari as governor of the autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao. Miswari is running on a post. All he needs is one vote to win. His. Arlene Biasbas was in Sulu when he cast his ballot. Inside precinct number 5-1 at the Tulawi Central School in Hulo, Nur Miswari was handed a ballot. He turned to his aide and asked, what shall I do? This is Miswari's second time to run in an election. The first was during the 1970 Constitutional Convention, where he lost. This time, he's assured of victory. To peace, democracy, and progress for our people here in Mindanao and eventually for the entire country. He's probably the only candidate who didn't need to campaign. He had the full backing of the Ramos administration. A Comelec commissioner and the Nampral chairman even accompanied him to vote. The chairman is a Muslim and the co-chairman is a Christian, all working together in order to have a clean and honest elections. Also, this election is probably the most peaceful ever in Sulu. The clans that used to clash over every elected position have been told by Malacanang to lie low for a while. We have to comply with the the appeal of the administration, but honestly, people a little bit reluctant because uh, nila, kahit hindi kami magboto, panalo na yan. <laughs> Certainly, Noor Miswari is not your ordinary candidate. Government made sure he'd run in this election. They also made sure he'd win. They want to make sure the peace plan works. With Val Cuenca, this is Arlene de la Cruz Bias Boss in Holosulu. The counting is done by computers and the Comelec says it can proclaim Miswari by Wednesday. But in Lanao del Sur, old problems like ballot snatching and trigger-happy men caused the failure of election in four towns. Let's hear from Cesar Soriano, live from Marawi City. Cesar. Good evening, Angelo. Comelec officials and candidates for the assembly here in Lanao del Sur are having a meeting right now inside the Camp Anay Pakpak. For the second time, Commissioner Remedios Fernando appealed to the candidates to hold sway over the supporters for the smooth conduct of the special elections tomorrow. Today's elections in the town of Madalum bogged down while several precincts in the municipalities of Ganasi, Lumbatan, Sultan Gomander, and Bacolod, Kalawi had failure of elections. Official ballots in some precincts of Bacolod, Kalawi, and Sultan Gomander were already filled up even before the election started. The failure of the PNP and the military to provide adequate security to polling centers in these municipalities encouraged armed men to freely roam around and cow voters at will. 
In Madalom, almost all teachers have refused to report for duty after supporters of rival candidates clashed and started firing guns. Bad weather since this afternoon continued to hamper the canvassing of ballots at the provincial PNP headquarters. Up to this, our Angelo, only ballots from 25 out of 37 municipalities in Lanao del Sur could be accounted for. Helicopters assigned to transport the ballots from five far-flung areas were grounded due to inclement weather. Some Comelec representatives bringing the ballot boxes were forced to walk across the mountains and take motor vessels across the Lake Lanao under adverse conditions. The PNP and the military say more troops will be deployed to the municipalities that will undergo special elections tomorrow. The still contested votes, according to Comelec officials, will affect the overall picture of the polls. That's the latest here in Marawi Angelo. Back to you. Thank you very much, Cesar. From Cotabato City, Danny Bonafé gives us a picture of the election in Maguindanao. Danny, are you there? Yeah, thank yeah, you, thank uh, you. Uh, Angelo. The counting here in Maguindanao was a bit delayed, uh, mainly because most of the uh, election returns, even those from nearby municipalities, were brought to their town halls before they were moved into the Cotabato City Pilot School. The counting machines only started rolling at around 7 or 8.45 this evening. Since Ms. Wari and this uh, running mate uh, are running unopposed, what we are really waiting for is the results of the two posts in Maguindanao. Even possible skirmishes between government troops and the ML MILF here in Maguindanao are not being anticipated anymore. Instead, what the Comelec is watching out uh, for the possible ballot snatching incidents which may still be possible since many ballot boxes have not reached the counting uh, center yet. As you know, Angelo Arms uh, or the Armed Comele Commissioner Regalado Maambong went as far as saying these elections was the dullest in the political history of Muslim Mindanao. And we have this report from Charivilla. No, this soldier is not dead. He's just dead tired from waiting for incidents to happen. Violent incidents which commonly erupt in Mindanao during elections. Political observers say if this trend continues, these elections will go down in history as the most peaceful political exercise in the region. Even armed Kamele Commissioner in charge, Regalado Maambong, says the political climate here in Mindanao is unusually boring. Well, I'm sorry, in 1993 I called, they characterized the election here as boring in spite of the threats, not because it was very peaceful. I don't mind saying that this election now, it appears to me, is uh, very boring. <laughs> Some local reporters tried hard to bring excitement to this political exercise. But hard as they try, police authorities till now have not received any reports of disturbances. What transpired instead were minor confusions in the manner of voting. But Maambong says these confusions were anticipated since they were implementing a new system. The computerized elections in the arm may also register as the fastest elections in Philippine history, at least in terms of tabulating election results. We give it around 24 to 36 hours. Observers say the unusual political climate now prevailing in Mindanao is partly because Nur Miswari and his running mate Jimmy Matalam ran unopposed. For ABS-CBN News, I'm Chari Villa, Cotabato City. Okay, uh, that's the situation here in Maguindanao. Back to Zamboanga. Thank you very much, Danny. Chari. Here in Zamboanga City, well, back to Zamboanga City, opponents of the SPCPD are moving to recall Mayor Vitaliano Agan for supporting the creation of the council. Paul Marquez, who hails from Zamboanga, who is now SNN News Director, tells us what is behind their fears and frustrations. It is so unlike the Chavacano. Zamboanga City is restless. Opponents of the SPCPD want to recall their mayor, Vitaliano Agan, for supporting the SPCPD. Emotions are running high, even among the Catholic clergy. What is in the peace agreement that makes it so repulsive? First, the council members, while appointed by the president, will be recommended by the MNLF. Another is the designation of Islamic elders as council advisors. And third, the creation of a consultative council with lawmaking powers. The unspoken reason is Christians, while they claim to live in peace with Muslims, 
do not trust the Yemen left. No one is against peace and development. But Christians doubt if the MNLF can do it. The MNLF has to, to apply uh, tolerance, you know, perseverance. Of course, uh, every situation uh, like this, there is always an you know, opposition. Government also needs to be patient and to reassure the people about their worst fears that the Muslim will take away their land. Every Muslim is an MNLF in disguise, that not every MNLF rebel is a bandit. It's not the big issues like peace and development, but these fears, real or imagined, that concerns most Christians in Zamboanga right now. Paul Marquez, ABS-CBN News, Zamboanga. And as a reaction to all this, Christian communities arming themselves say, they do not want to provoke a confrontation with the MNLF. But as Patrick Pius reports, the people feel more secure if they have the means to defend themselves. They call themselves the Christian Unified Command, a ragtag band of 30 civilians armed mostly with vintage rifles. They're not vigilantes, they're more like neighborhood watches, one of several being organized because the people fear abuse by the MNLF. What we are driving at here is that uh, even the kidnappers, even the, the holdupers, even the pirates are now with the MNLF. The peace agreement has already allowed the MNLF a foothold in areas just outside Sambuanga City. Jaime Cabato, a city councillor, says the people feel government is conceding too much to Miswari. He has been so pampered by government that he has been made into a demigod, an idol for, for uh, the Muslims. A gun store owner in Sambuanga City says more people are buying guns. They're not preparing for war, but there's concern that an end to the war won't mean an end to the lawlessness. More than 5,000 rebels are supposed to be integrated into the armed forces. The yeah, MNRF was kidnapped, was pirated, was murdered would go scot free and would now be the one uh, enforcing the law. The other problem, retired General Delphine Castro says, are rebels who won't be integrated, but who will be allowed to keep their guns. Castro denies he's behind the Christian militias, although he admits they have been seeking his advice. They should buy the firearms, get license for this. Maybe um, even if they are not given licenses. If I were the Christians, I would organize a revolutionary movement for defense of the, uh, their areas, not against the government, but to protect themselves. And the fully equipped militias do not want to pick a fight with the MNLF, but by announcing their existence, they simply mean to dramatize their strong opposition to a peace agreement, which they say places the Christian majority population under the MNLF. Patrick Pius, ABS-CBN News, Zamboanga City. For your courier and cargo forwarding needs, all you have to do is call and JRS Express it. We're reliable, fast, and efficient. Serving the nation next day door-to-door -door delivery since 1960. When we come back, a word from the Comelec. The more pure stage coupons you have, the more... ...give answers to questions in the minds of a lot of people on the conduct of today's exercise. The Comelec held a briefing a short while ago, and Loren Legarda is in Manila to tell us all about it. Loren? Thank you, Angelo. The Comelec has released partial results from seven precincts from Tawi-Tawi. The counting was delayed by frequent power failures. Pia Ontiveros is at the Comelec headquarters right now. Pia? Lauren, Kamalek has results from uh, seven precincts in Bongao, Tawi-Tawi. Official and partial results show Nur Miswari appears to be the one, if not the only choice. 1,258 votes were cast in his favor. If Tawi-Tawi results are any indication, the numbers uh, could mean or are proof of Nur Miswari's popularity for someone who spent so many years away from the homeland. Comelec Executive Director Rex Bora also tells us we will have results from uh, several precincts in Maguindanao anytime soon. Meantime, Namprel's Akbay Bilang, its uh, quick count arm that's stationed here at the Comelec, has uh, come up with unofficial and partial results. Namprel has counted less than 5% of 
Of the more than 900,000 votes that could have been cast today, Nur Miswari has, as expected, the lead with 4,830 votes. His opponents have 37 and 15 votes each. Miswari's running mate, Jimmy Matalam, has 4,012 votes. 21 seats in the regional assembly are still up for grabs. Lauren, also, uh, just about 10 minutes ago, we got word that Chairman Bernardo Pardo has approved the holding of special elections tomorrow in uh, 55 precincts in the 2nd District of Lanao del Sur after the poll body declared a failure of elections there. Lauren? Thank you very much, Pia Ontiveros, reporting live from the Comelec. Malacanang downplayed reports rebel groups, the MILF, Abu Sayyaf, and the NPA have reportedly formed an alliance against the government. Executive Secretary Ruben Torres says if there was such an alliance, he doubts it will hold for long because the groups have different ideologies. As for the MILF, Torres says the group will submit its comments and recommendations on the government's peace pact with the MNLF. Torres says government will propose a ceasefire agreement with the MILF to get their own peace negotiations going. Police are now keeping a tight guard on the Egyptian embassy. Authorities say they receive intelligence reports a foreign terrorist group is out to assassinate Egyptian diplomats. Chief Superintendent Victor Chanko says the plot is connected to the conviction of Muslim militant Ramzi Youssef. Youssef was convicted in New York last week for plotting to blow up a dozen U.S. airliners. Chanko says the embassy is being targeted because of Egypt's role in the Middle East peace talks. Youssef reportedly harbors hatred for Israel. The U.S. Intelligence Service will assist the PNP and the military in intelligence gathering as part of security preparations for the APEC conference in November. In a security briefing at Camp Aguinaldo this morning, APEC Director General Lisandro Abadia said they have assigned over 10,000 military and police personnel to provide security. Abadia says protesters will be barred from holding rallies near the conference venue. The cholera outbreak in the areas in Manila has claimed its fifth victim. A 14-year-old girl from Pandacan died from acute gastroenteritis. Number of people rushed to hospitals has climbed to nearly 300 during the past week. Health officials say the outbreak has been contained in Paco, Pandacan, and San Andres. The president has ordered Manila Mayor Alfredo Lim to intensify its information campaign against cholera. Cesc Bulon now gives us an update on the Subic Port Terminal project. Cesc? This portion is brought to you by PLDT 105 Country Direct Service. Thanks, Lauren. A three-cornered fight is shaping up for the right to develop the Subic Port Terminal. Royal Port Services Incorporated, which landed third in the bidding for the project, says the bids of both ICTSI and Guoco Hutchison are flawed. Because of interlocking interests, non-compliance with tender rules, monopolistic tendencies, unrealistic projections, and high tariff rates. Royal Port President Francisco Delgado says what was bidded out is a service and not a product. Thus, the award should go to the lowest bidder, which can offer lower tariffs to make the market more attractive. The MLNH Consortium is not backing out of the Club John Hay project and will contest any decision awarding the project to second highest bidder, Phil Estate and Penta Capital Consortium. MLNH President Sulficio Tagud says their refusal to sign the lease agreement does not mean they are chickening out. The BCDA and MLNH agreed to postpone the contract signing, supposed to take place yesterday, until problems on the property's land area are resolved. BCDA is considering reclassifying 121 hectares of forest land into managed forest land to complete the 247 hectares stipulated in the development contract. But touching the forest lands is expected to spur protests from Baguio residents. And that's it for business. I'm Cesc Dillon. More news right after this. Peace agreements. Talks got stalled after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was elected in May. PLO leader Yasser Arafat and Netanyahu agreed to resume talks after meeting each other for the first time last Saturday. Iraq says it will take action if Turkish troops cross into northern Iraq. The Turkish government wants to establish a six-mile security zone to keep separatist Turkish rebels from crossing the border. The buffer zone will stretch from Syria to Iran. In Japan, the governor of Okinawa will try to convince the prime minister to reduce the number of U.S. bases on the island. A referendum yesterday showed 90% of Okinawa's residents want to reduce the U.S. presence. 
75% of U.S. bases in Japan and in Okinawa. Anti-American sentiment flared last year after an Okinawan girl was raped by U.S. servicemen. In Italy, controversy erupted at a beauty pageant when a black woman was crowned Miss Italy. 18-year-old Denny Mendez is an immigrant from the Dominican Republic. She got the most votes from television viewers and judges, but two of the judges were dismissed after saying Mendez did not reflect true Italian beauty. Now here's Diane Castillejo with tennis action in the U.S. Open. Diane. This portion is brought to you by Petron XCS. Thanks, Lauren. At the U.S. Open, the defending champions outclassed their respective rivals to keep their crowns. Steffi Graf went home with her fifth victory at the Open, beating second-seeded Monica Sellers in two sets. She finished the match just before rain fell. That delayed the men's singles finals. Pete Sampras claimed his fourth U.S. Open title with a straight set win over Michael Chung. Sampras overwhelmed the number two seed to fashion out his eighth Grand Slam victory and secure his number one world ranking. The win came on the day that would have been the 45th birthday of his late coach Tim Gullickson, who died from brain cancer last May. It was under Gullickson that Sampras became world number one and a three-time Wimbledon winner. Here at home, tomorrow is a do-or-die battle for Shell in Alaska in the best-of-seven series in the PBA Commissioner's Cup. Shell's Chito Narvasa is now confident of bagging the crown. As for Alaska's Tim Cohn, whose team was considered the favorites, he refused to make any predictions. The series is tied at 3-all. Shell won game six yesterday. And that's sports news tonight. The World Tonight returns after these. Good evening, I'm Gigi Grande with a weather forecast. Typhoon Maring, also known as Typhoon Sally, is located north of the Gulf of Tonkin. She's headed for southern China and Vietnam, bringing heavy rains tonight and tomorrow. Winds of up to 150 kilometers per hour are also expected. Here at home, Maring may be out of the country, but don't expect sunny skies just yet. Mindanao is in for some stormy weather. Luzon will have wet conditions as well. No thanks to a low-pressure area just 790 kilometers east of the Bicol region. We'll be watching this area for the next 24 hours. Sunrise comes at 544 and sunset at 601. And that's the weather forecast. Now the highlights of the day's ARMM coverage. together so I think this is the mm, Basilan can become a model of unity a good relationship between Muslim and Christians in the Philippines let's put an end to this world of war on behalf of ABS-CBN, I'd like to thank everyone for having joined us in today's continuing coverage of the armed elections and thank all the ABS-CBN personnel in the field for simply being there. With today's election, has the option between integration and secession been transformed into an option between assimilation and stagnation? My professor in the University of the Philippines, Cesar Mahul, once said that by making the Filipino Muslim real Muslims, only then can they be true Filipinos. And in a plaza in the center of Sambuanga City, a prayer is dominantly printed on a board for everyone to see. And on it says, Lord, into thy hands we commit our people and motherland. And given the Filipinos' indomitable belief in the future, can peace be far behind? And that's the world tonight, September 9, 1996. I'm Angelo Castro Jr. I'm Laura Legarda here in Manila. Philippines broadcasting from Sambuanga. Thank you and good night.